Hey, today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about professions. First of all, if it's your first character, you need to finish the Tildressus quest line, especially the Chromie time traveling quest chain. That's over here. Then you get back to Valdraken, and then you go to the east side, and you finish all of the quests in here, and then you can get the Great Spark of Ingenuity. And once you finish the full quest line in here with your main character, then you can actually skip it with your future alts. You just say, I already did this quest line, skip it for me. And then you get five of the sparks of ingenuity at once. And all your future characters save a lot of time. And the next most important quest line is from a flight master in Valdraken. You head down to those two dudes and then you finish the quest lines. Some of them are not that important, but on the first character, just finish them. Then you get shards of draconic knowledge, which gives you additional skill points. And then all the future characters can finish the quest instantly as well. If you head over here to the ruby life pools, there's a flight path. And if you go to the flight path, there's a Draenei. And you talk to the lady in blue and tell her I already finished this quest line, skip it and all the rewards in between. And then you save yourself a lot of time and get instantly five of the knowledge shards. Then there are hidden skill points for your professions. And if you, there are a few add-ons to help you find all of them, especially the treasures. For example, I have eight out of eight treasures, which gives me like 24 knowledge points within the first day of the profession. I will link relevant add-ons down below. And the most important add-on for crafters in this expansion is Craftsim. You can see this window, the Craftsim average profit. It tells you how much profit you make with inspiration, multi-craft and resourcefulness. I can already guarantee rank 5, so inspiration doesn't do anything and it's gear that is buying on pickup so I can sell it. Then the next important part is the profession gear. You can get additional skill. The most important parts are the robes and then the second tool and the least important part is the part on the right in my opinion at the start because you want the highest possible stats um, in skill and this gives like plus six for other professions only Taylor has plus 10 for this slot and then plus six and this usually also has plus six in green and if you get the upgraded version you only have plus 10 so it's only a plus 4 upgrade and the other ones are plus 6 usually then for most builds you want inspiration some builds actually profit more from multicraft for example engineering and very few builds profit a lot from resourcefulness one of the builds would be like prospecting with jewel crafting i have a lot of tools i basically have each tool for each of the main stats, inspiration, resourcefulness and multicraft and I skip crafting speed because most builds don't profit from that. And now I'll show you how you can order with the artisan consortium. You go to the NPC, type in what you need and then you put in all of the materials. If it's a private order, ideally, then you can guarantee the quality and you really want to put in a draconic missive. In most cases the inspiration is the best. But look whatever craft sim recommends you for your main crafts. But the first item I usually crafted was the inspiration and then the multi-craft and then the resourcefulness tool. Then you have the materials yourself or you give your crafter a really nice big tip for the materials. This costs like 3000 gold and so I pay him the 3000 gold or multiples if he has like 25% inspiration. I could expect like 4 crafts, so I've, I multiplied the price times 4 and give like a 12,000 gold tip. Or if I uncheck this and I don't have enough artisan metal, I add some more. Or you have the character yourself. And the most important part for the minimum quality, usually you don't want it because most people don't scam I assume. And you just click none. Usually you provide these materials yourself. And now I show you the biggest noob trap, which most people use, is 
they set the minimum quality to rank 5 because they want at least quality 5. But for most crafters, even if you have a full spec, you can't guarantee rank 5 because there aren't enough knowledge points available in the game, so it's mathematically impossible. And they check the minimum quality because they want the best quality, which is obvious, but you need inspiration builds for that. So if I place an order, and then we check the other character, we check the inspiration tool, we have 35% inspiration, so average of 3 crafts, so we can hit the maximum quality, click start order, create, you have insufficient reagents, usually it says you can craft it because you can't guarantee the minimum quality, and if you click at start order, and we see at the craft sim, I couldn't make it without the additional illustrious insight, because if I don't use the inspiration breakpoint, I could only get it to rank 4 and not rank 5. And if I use the lustrous inside, then I could actually get it to maximum quality. Otherwise, I need the inspiration. But the lustrous inside is really expensive usually, and it's not worth it in most cases. And most jewel crafters charge like 10 to 40k per lustrous inside, as far as I know. So it's really not worth it. I rather craft it three times for 3000 gold instead of one time for 40k or more. And I kind of can't prove my point right now because I could use the illustrious insight because my build is already pretty much maxed out. But usually it's the best option to take minimum quality 4 or ideally 3 if you think the people don't scam you. Because if you look at the craft sim it tells you which materials are the cheapest. And sometimes you take the cheaper options and in very rare cases the quality drops down to minimum quality 3. And then you can't craft it because it's set for quality 4 and then the person that orders has to resend the order or take more expensive materials. But in most cases you need the inspiration block anyway. So it doesn't really matter too much, it's just a little bit of waste of time. But if it's a trustworthy person, I would not put in any quality at all. For engineering, if you want to make gold, the optimized efficiency is usually the best part. Generally, you want to take plus one skill for all engineering stuff. This and this give the general skills. And engineering is the only skill that has a weird inspiration tree. That one gives additional percent inspiration per skill point. And usually inspiration gives a full level, so if you can guarantee rank 4, inspiration will push you to rank 5 usually. I completely ignore the explosives, because I'm not a goblin. If you want to level up to level 100, in the past you ideally focused on the explosives and then you can make a daily cooldown somewhere that gives you a skill point. But right now, the cheapest way is the Cascarite Fisher Friend. I paid like 100k for the recipe in the past and then like 20k or more per craft and I decked out all of my characters but right now it's really really cheap the recipe and the materials I had to craft it for like last 30 or 40 skill points and paid like 20k per so it was really expensive the optimized efficiency is for gold making resourcefulness, multi-craft, whatever mechanical mind is for the inspiration parts and some tinkers which make decent money but sell really slowly. Then for the inscription I first picked the rune mastery and then the infinite discovery for the inspiration. After that I specced into wood carving and into staves because a lot of people wanted a staff and I was the first on the server that could guarantee a 180 with embellishment and whatever on it. And then I took the profession tools with this many points I could guarantee rank 5s in multicraft, but I barely used that. I needed 5 points in codexes, so I can guarantee them to 418 as well. Currently taking up the resourcefulness for the runes, can guarantee them max rank 2. Archiving, I really went hard into contracts and missives first, but it was kind of a waste in my opinion. <laughs> I crafted like 4 total. Because I only began farming the reputation after a month with this character. The Draconic Treaties are kind of important, 
because you craft a lot of them, all of your characters if you have an old army. Dark Mysteries and the Dark Moon decks aren't that profitable. I crafted like 2 or 3 over the whole duration of the expansion so far. Staffs I crafted a lot and I don't do the milling and ink creation. And the Dark Moon decks aren't that profitable in my opinion. Most profit lies with the runes and treatise and the missives maybe. If you want to max out inscription as soon as possible, then you need the chef's splendid rolling pin. It has no bound on pickup materials and you can just spam craft those for under 4k gold on my server, which is really cheap and boosts you all the way to skill 100. I think at the end it becomes a green recipe. And for tailoring, if you want to craft gear, tailoring mastery and then shoot stitchery with the inspiration. These are the most important parts. Then you go to garment crafting. I went first with like 10 points, 5 points, then 10 points, and then spec in one of them. So I can unlock this recipe. Then I get to the next sub specialization. After another 10 points, grab the next one. And then another 10 points and grab the last one. And then get the next points in here. Then went to the next spec. I maxed out the ropes first because I wanted to craft my chest for the profession because it has inspiration and multicraft which are huge as the other effect I thought yeah I want to push that and I spent a lot of money on it because the materials in the past cost me a lot of money. I just spent a lot of knowledge points into tailoring and you don't need that at all to guarantee rank 5 480 gear with inspiration in season 1. You don't even need to spec into those last points. You just need basically 30 there, 40 there, 40 there, 50 there. And you can guarantee pretty much all on the max rank, on the highest level. This is total clickbait for the gear. The chronocloth gloves and leggings and a Suvif mantle and a Suvif robe. I crafted like one or two of each in the past three or four months. There's like no demand for it. And you could save yourself like 90 points if you don't spec into that. I want to spec into resourcefulness, but the tailoring materials are so dirt cheap I didn't bother specking into resourcefulness therefore. And I don't want to format the characters, so I didn't spec into cloth collection either. And if you want to level up tailoring, it became really really cheap now. You just craft the Master Wilder Cloth Fishing Cap, which is from a uh, reputation. Got which one? I think Wild Dragon maybe. And for like 80 gold you can get a skill point. I spent a lot more. I just crafted gear, which needed spark of ingenuity. But it was the first on the server, so I got most of the crafts. The next part is leatherworking. That tree isn't as nice. The first one is leatherworking discipline. It gives general skill and then you want to take the inspiration wheel as well. If you want to craft the bow, Bonding and stitching is also helpful. Then I specced into leatherworking. I can guarantee everything on item level 118 or the highest level and quality without specking in the last notes. I think I specced into that at the start so I can guarantee it with an abanishment on the highest level and quality. This one is for the venom stepped boots so I can guarantee those with the highest quality too because I didn't have enough points yet and these points have high skill per skill point invested so I spend like 5 points and get 10 skill then I spend another 5 points and get 10 skill then I spend another 5 points and get 50 skill 2x, 2x, 3x then if you want to craft a flaring cowl leather helmet then you need the elemental mastery the bow counts to bestial patterns if I remember correctly so if you want to craft a bow, this one helps as well. And if you want to craft the toxic stuff, you need to invest into this. But I really dislike going into the Brackenheide. I just spent the points in there too soon. And actually never go into Brackenheide. And for some of them, there's like no demand. And the past I even paid people like 10 to 20k gold. Just so I can craft the first crafts. And for leatherworking, I honestly don't remember how I got to another skill. I think I made a bunch of toxified armor patches and then I just crafted gear for other people and got to 100 that way really quickly. 
and maybe profession gear. But I think there's no spammable cheap method for jewel crafting. I first went jewelers, tools at mastery, then brilliant bobbling with inspiration. Then I went enterprising and prospecting. That was the main build for prospecting ores, if you saw it in the past video. And if you didn't see the video yet, I put a link in the info box in the top right. Then I went with selling, jewelry, necklaces, and after that rings. And I bought the Lariat for half a million and offered the services for free. Fun side note is when I say um, pay what you want, then people usually pay between 1 and 500 gold. And if I say it's free, then people pay an average of 1000 gold. It's really weird. Then I went into carving so I can craft some idols and the optional reagents so I can craft them to 480 if needed. And I didn't spec into faceting because I need like 40 points there. 40, 40, 40, 40. So that's 200 points. I'm only at like 90 points right now. So I made another character where I can spec into jewel crafting and spec into different gems. So I can spec into all of the different epic gems and don't lock up too much resources from this character. The most profitable way was to get the elemental lariat and then craft those and get skill point from it. You could craft one of the gem recipes for like one, less than 1000 gold and get skill points up to skill 81 I think. And then after that I craft a profession gear. I think the tiered medallion also had skill points up to like 75 maybe or maybe even higher but the best way to level up in my opinion is to grab the glassware go 10 20 10 30 35 points into glassware so you need like 10 here and then 35 so you need 45 skill points in total you can get that in like one or two weeks and then you can get one skill point every 20 hours in real life time. And that's the cheapest and safest way to get to skill 100. The next best way is to get 10 points here and then 40 points in one of these four branches. But then you kind of also need 10 points here. And I think it was at least 10 points, maybe 20, but I think it only needed the 10% additional skill. I think with the another 10% it was overshot and this one was definitely not needed with the inspiration with the skill points in my case with the other character. So I can get a rank 3 gem with the inspiration proc but always look at your craftsman. It's the best tool ever. And for my enchanting I used Mainly the rods, rune, cascarite, rod, crafted for a bunch of other people. First I wanted to make the disenchant shuffle, but it was annoyingly much to click. And I didn't use TSM at the time, so I just wasted points in here. And this one I specced into recently. Most important part again, inspiration and the general skill. I leveled up by crafting profession gears for other people, but right now the best methods are the illusion, primal, air, earth, fire, frost because you get skill points for a long time and they only turn green like close to 100 at least it was for the blood elf but it should be very similar for other characters as well or other races it costs you like 1 to 2000 gold for one skill point and closer to the end a little bit more and the recipes go for like less than 10k or you just grab the cheapest one you can find of these four and craft them and maybe you even make a profit of it. Then the second jewel I have, I have specced into all of the trees for the different epic gems and then the brilliant bobbling. As I said, you only need like this node and maybe this node and you don't need this node in most cases. And now all of the future points is back into a jeweler's tool set. And by the way, I got to mention it, and maybe it helps some people 
and I know at least I helped one person with it in the past, but if you have like currently 75 skill with four branches, then you can spec each of the nodes and then you can profit from some of it maybe. In this case, you get a recipe and therefore an additional skill point. And here as well, so you have two more skill points just from specking into those nodes, even if you don't want to invest more into the trees. But with the two skill points, you can spec into something else that you do want. And the same in here, I didn't spec into it yet. I just unlocked it, because if I have the second subspecialization already unlocked, then I can also spec into it and get the 5% additional savings from resourcefulness. And I highly recommend to do that if you unlocked it already. And this is my alchemy spec. Basically it's my second alchemy character. In my opinion, transmutation is not worth it at all currently with the prices of the different awakened materials. The way I would spec into alchemy now would be alchemical theory, 10 points, then inspiring ambience, maxed out for the full inspiration, then go into file mastery, go 10 points into the first tree, then go into file lore with another 10 points, and then go batch production with 20, and then I start maxing out the file mastery, and then file lore, and then I go into whatever else I want in here or here, then go into potion mastery, go the same way potion mastery, potion lore, batch production, max that out ASAP, then go potion mastery, potion lore, and then either frost formulated potions and then air formulated potions, and don't forget to unlock them as soon as you have them available, like here and here, then have half an hour motivation on my files. What you absolutely should not take is file experimentation and potion experimentation. It's absolute bullshit. And if you don't want to take one of the other points like potion mastery or file mastery, or you really want to have a specific um, decaying file or potion, then you take the first one was like 5 points, then you can get the inspiration and another 10 points. So you have like 15 points in alchemical theory, spec into inspiration and then unlock the chaology. And after that you can unlock the new recipes with the experimentations. It takes a while and takes a lot of artisan metal, but it's worth it. And then you need to go into Brackenheit, ideally M0. Then you can expand the lockout as much as you want and you don't need to re-clear the dungeon. And then ideally you go into the dungeon once, craft all of the recipes you have unlocked and get a bunch of free skill points. My second alchemist is basically a potion mastery and accidentally specced into potion experimentation, which was a total waste of time. The only thing that could be valuable is the additional inspiration for 4 hours for alchemy crafts with like 2% inspiration, but if you have enough points, it's like 10 points, maybe it's worth the 2% inspiration. Or if you're a high value crafter, it most definitely is worth the 2%, but you don't really want to break through chance and uh, advanced potion experimentation. That's total bullshit. For example for me, by the time I had the chance to get the advanced potion stuff, I already had all of the other points unlocked because I needed to do the experimentations to get to skill 100. Also tip for the dragons alchemical solution. You go to reclaim solution and you buy as many um, rank 1 potions as possible. For example for me the potion of frozen focus was the cheapest for like 80 silver per flask. Buy a bunch for cheap and then you never have to worry again about the solutions. And for blacksmithing first you take hammer control with like 10 points and then you get to the max inspiration, pick either armor smithing or weapon smithing, and then you rush to the end of one of the tree branches that you want. I wanted frost fire belt, so I went to the end there. Then I was able to craft the master hammer. It gives guaranteed one skill point, and at the time it cost me like 10 to 12k gold, so it was kinda cheap for 300k gold to get to max skill of a profession and then I went to 30 points there, grabbed all of the recipes, then went to the next branch, 
30 points all of the next ones then I will get 30 here get these ones and then I start with my weapon smithing but I only began blacksmithing recently or it was the last profession that I started and for cooking you do need to buy one recipe from the auction house which unlocks new recipes which you can level up to skill 100 then you need your profession gear ideally the blue one master swiller cloth the chef hat does cost arts and metal and you need to enchant your gear the rolling pin for example the other one you can't from the youtuber penguin she made a short about how you can unlock a special chef set which increases your crafting speed by a lot it doesn't show up in the crafting speed here but it boosts you a lot but for me i only craft food for myself and for the add-ons i show you which ones are relevant for trade and which ones are the most important craft sim absolute absolute best also is helpful profession shopping list is also really nice if you want to make profit with your crafting for example if you craft crimson gear the pvp stuff that you can put into the auction house and then you can track how much you want to buy, um, craft and how many materials you need to buy from the auction house for example then currently no mats no make became really relevant in the last patch 10.0.7 because a bunch of people go to the npc and then order something to uncheck this box and maybe put in some of the other gear or materials so it shows that some materials are available and then maybe a slight tip people think oh yeah way better than the other ones and then they craft it because if you see the order then it looks like that for the people but without the check mark and they just see oh yeah 2500 and 300 okay good they provided the material they don't check it because the check mark is actually missing on this one or their screen and they just craft it and waste a lot of the artisan metal and you have to be really really careful and this add-on helps you so that problem doesn't appear or it gets minimized there was some mentions in the blue post or something where it gets added to the basic ui so it shouldn't be a problem in the future anymore trade skill flux capacitor i'm not sure which add-on that is but i think it's the one that shows the additional infos like in here if i have done my weekly treasures from dirt and the one time stuff and those were the add-ons and some other tips if you are at 75 out of 100 skill then you can unlock all of the branches in a profession that has four branches for example if i go with enterprising and i'm at like 20 points so at 10 i get the first sub specialization at 20 second and 30 the last one and if i'm not sure if i take extravagancies or glassware then i wait but if i'm sure i want to take extravagancies then i take this and then once i'm at 30 points i take glassware even though i don't really want to spec into it but at least i can learn a new recipe and craft it once and get another skill point and invest it into whatever i want most at the time because there is no downside into specking into it if i already have it unlocked because i can spec it into a fourth tree that doesn't exist and if you have a second alt then you can make crafting orders to your main basically example in here i make a quick order so that other character can fulfill his crafting orders or fashion quests Two crafting orders fulfilled for example and then this other character can fulfill his engineering profession quest and you could argue that you theoretically help people if you make an order like this public order pay five gold and one silver and then you list it and you get a reagent value of 131 gold from a stranger and they fulfill their tailoring weekly and you pay like five gold and get 130 gold out of it if it's like really high like 400 gold i strongly think people won't craft it but if it's something like this then people may be crafted if they don't have a second alt where they can send themselves orders to fulfill their weekly quests for additional knowledge points and you maybe make a little bit of profit worst case you waste like five gold per listing something else that's really important is you saw i had a lot of artist metal 
but it's all in my bank and I can still craft out of my bank. I just need to have the materials in there. The NPC just pulls the stuff right out of the bank, which is really helpful. And if I use postal and send stuff to my other characters, then I don't need to worry about accidentally sending all of the materials that I actually want to use. You don't need to confirm the box, just double click create, if it's for your own alt. If you need a second alt, I would recommend Anivoka, because you can do the campaign quest really quickly and then transfer your character to a dragon and give yourself crafting orders so your main can do the weekly profession quests. But in fusions, there was a bug in the past at least, where you just put in the fusion with plus 30 difficulty. And then later on, when you swapped to the one with the 50 difficulty, it didn't just increase the difficulty by plus 20, but it went plus 30 and then another plus 50. So the recipe difficulty gets shown as way, way higher than it actually is. Craftsum shows you still the correct amount of materials that you should use or the optimized version. But in the user interface, it means the minimum quality that's guaranteed rank 4, for example, drops down to 3. And the same with the embellishments and Grifter's Powder. If you have an embellishment on it, plus 30 recipe difficulty, and you override it with the Grifter, then the plus 30 is still on the item and the recipe difficulty until you recrafted it once and then the plus 30 is gone and it's just a plus zero. There are some weekly knowledge points that you can grab. I will link the Reddit post into the description or in the comments and it's a really great post and it helps you find all of the rare mobs that drop specific weekly profession skill points. Um, for the Dark Moon Fair at the first weekend of the month there's always a Dark Moon Fair and then you have different quests and for some of the professions you need some resources from out of the Darkmoon Fair or from town and then you have to bring it into the Darkmoon Fair. For example, for Alchemy, you need five Moonberry Chews and some of the professions don't need any resources and I will link the VOV head post in the description as well so you're better prepared and don't have to waste too much time. And now that was all. Thanks a lot for sticking around along and hope you're having a great time with your professions.